we now look at section 12, capital C. This is a very popular section, and we see it basically all the time. This is the one where it applies to manufacturing assets. So if machinery is used in a process of manufacture, that is something that they will tell you in an exam, then you can class it, claim this allowance. Who can claim this? The owner of the machinery can claim it. If a person has purchased the machinery under a suspense of sale agreement, now remember a suspense of sale agreement is basically if X Limited sells a car to Mr. A and they say, Mr. A, you need to pay us back over three years. So until that, pro that time has passed, you're not the complete owner yet. As, uh, so if you don't make payment, we take the car back. That's basically a suspense of sale. Now, Mr. A is the purchaser. He can start claiming that immediately because he is considered just for tax purposes to be the owner. They don't anticipate that he's not going to make payment. Okay, so that's just a, that's a legal issue. If they, that happens and he doesn't qualify for it, they take the asset away, there's a disposal and so forth. Right, so the purchaser. Or if you are the lessor, but that means you're also the owner. So if I am the owner and I lease an asset to you, so you rent it from me, I, as the owner, will be able to claim this allowance, as long as you are using it in the process of manufacture. Okay. This also applies to aircraft ships and improvements to any of the above. It also applies to hotels, but that's outside your syllabus. Right. Manufacturing assets is the most important, though. You can only get this if you are using the asset for the first time. Now, what I want you to understand here, this does not mean that it is a new asset that you are using. It means it's the first time that you are using the asset. So, X Limited in year one buys a machine, in year two sells the machine, and in year three buys that same machine back and then uses it again. In year three, he will not, or it will not be able to claim section 12C because it's not the first time they're using it. They use it for the first time in year one. Not too common to see that situation like that. So how does this calculation work? Very simple. You need to know there's a difference between new assets and second-hand assets. If you buy a new asset and the cost of the asset is a million rands, year one, two, three, four. You can claim in year one a million rands times 40%. So you can claim a deduction of 400,000. In year two, you can claim times 20%, and you can do the same for years three and four. So this is called an accelerated allowance, that 40% there, because if you buy a second-hand asset, so you, it's not a new asset, it works a little bit different. If it's a second-hand asset, in year one, you will claim... A million times 20. So 200,000. And there will be an extra year that you have to claim it in 200,000. Right, so. 40, 20, 20. So this one is called the 40, 20, 20, 20 rule. And the second asset, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. So why do they call it an accelerated allowance? Because here it takes you four years to claim it. Here it takes you five years. Right. Please note, in all instances, there's no apportionment. So what does that mean? It means there's no situation where you will say a million times 40% times an amount over 12. No, that you do not do. So, let's say you have a tax year that runs from the 1st of Jan until the 31st of December. And on the 29th of December, you bring into use machine X right and it's a new machine you can claim that full amount so even if you just use it for one day you can claim the full amount right so there's no apportionment please be aware of that guys and again we always do it from the date that it is brought into use in the production of income now very important here section 12c the asset must have a cost so if an asset is donated to you, or you inherit it, or something like that, and there's no cost, you cannot claim Section 12C. What will you do then? 
then you will use section 11e, the wear and tear section. Now, again, I just want to remind you, before we look at section 12c, just want to remind you guys, if you buy a manufacturing machine, it will qualify for section 12c and it will qualify for section 11e. Right, because it's still a movable asset. You need to know that you have to use section 12c and not section 11e. The only time you will use section 11e is if section 12c is not available. For example, if there's no cost or it is not the first time that you are using it, then you will use section 11e. So let's quickly see what it says for some parts of it in the Act. Section 12c, 2, for purpose of this section, the cost to the taxpayer of any asset shall be deemed to be the lesser of the actual cost to the taxpayer to acquire that asset or the cost to which a person would if he had acquired an asset under a cash transaction concluded at arm's length on the date. So what are they telling you? They're telling you the cost is the lesser of the actual cost or the arm's length market value. So you can't pay more than the market value, right? But if you pay less, then you use the less. And please note it also includes the direct cost of the installation or erection thereof. They then tell you, just be aware of it, section 12C5, it must, should be logical though, the deductions allowed in terms of this section and section 11O. Section 11O is um, when there's a disposal of an asset and you make a loss. It's just usually could be called a scrapping loss, it's like a negative recoupment. They tell you shall not exceed the cost. So what they're saying is, if the cost of the asset is a million, your section 12C allowances plus your section 11O allowance, and don't worry about that, you'll see when you look at disposals of assets separately how that works nicely. But they're trying to tell you those costs cannot be more, or those deductions cannot be more than a million. It can't be more than that cost. So you can't claim 1.5 million rands as a deduction, for example. Okay, so logic. Six, any expenditure other than the expenditure referred to in section 11a, that's the general deduction formula, incurred by a taxpayer during any year of assessment in moving an asset, in respect of which a deduction was allowed or is allowable, from one location to another shall, where the taxpayer is entitled to a deduction in respect of such an asset under subsection 1, in that year and one or more succeeding years will be allowed to be deducted from his income in equal installments in each year which the deduction is allowable. Or it must be in all other cases, in any other case, be allowed to be deducted from his income in that year. Okay, what are they talking about here? They're talking about moving costs. So they're saying, um, let's say you buy a new machine. How are we going to claim it? Year one, two, three, four. Year one, we're going to claim 40%. Year two, we're going to claim 20%. Year three, right? That's new. Second hand, how are we going to claim it? 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20 Okay, but what's more important here is the amount of years. New asset, one, two, three, four years. Second hand, one, two, three, four, five years. So what they're saying here is, let's say you incur moving costs in year three. Then, and let's say the cost, the moving cost I'm talking about here is, um, let's say, 90,000 rands. Let's say if you incurred in year three, you must look at how many years are still left for second hand asset is three. So for second hand, and then you just say 90,000 divided by three, and you claim each in equal installments. That's what they're talking about here. Right? And if it's new, you say how many years are left? Two. So then it would be 90,000 divided by two. If it happens after it's been written off, you claim the full amount immediately. That is what they are telling us here in B, in any other case. Now we look at section 12E. Now section 12E deals with small business corporations. Now my discussion now does not tell you how a small business corporation works, that you need to study separately. 
it's in section 12e. Basically, for now, what I want you to just understand is that you can be, when you are a company, you can be either a small business corporation or not a small business corporation. Now, if you're a small business corporation, this is a company which the government is trying to support, so they have a little bit of uh, better tax rates for them and better tax allowances. If you're not a small business corporation, all of the normal rules apply. Right, so that's something you need to be aware of. So, what I want you to see is, if you are not a small business corporation, that is what we've been looking at so far. Manufacturing machinery, you get section 12C. New, 40, 20, 20, 20, second hand, 20 over 5 years. This is what we just studied. If you are a small business corporation, you can claim 100% of the cost in year 1 immediately. And very important, you must use this. So just understand for now, that if you are classified as a small business corporation, you can look at that later, the classification, how it works. But to understand for now, if you are a small business corporation and you buy a manufacturing asset, you can claim 100% immediately. So that's great. Instead of waiting four or five years, you can claim everything immediately. That's great. If you buy any other asset which qualifies for Section 11E, that's the movable assets. If you're not a small business corporation, then we claim Section 11E, we and T. If you are a small business corporation, however, you can choose, that's the first thing I want you to see, you can choose to either use Section 11E, which is the normal wear and tear section, or you can choose to use Section 12E. Section 12E says you can claim 50% in year 1, 30% in year 2, 20% in year 3, and there's no apportionment. Right, there's no apportionment, and there's no one rand residual. So this works in the same way that Section 12C works. So if you buy a computer, right, if you buy a computer, it has a cost of 9,000 rands and a three-year useful life, you can either say you can claim Section 11E, which will be then in year 1, year 2, and year 3, 9,000 divided by 3 times 12 over 12. Just for interest sake, I've made it the same. Or year 3. Right, so you can either do that, or you can use section 12E, and in year 1, you will claim 9,000 times 50%. And I've deliberately given you guys the same amount of years here, three years. Right, which one would you use if you had a choice here? Section 11E, Section 12E. Okay, and obviously you can see Section 12E, guys, we, there's no deduction of one rand, but that one rand is not significant enough to obviously make a decision for us. Which one would you use? I would personally use Section 12E. And then 4,500 rands versus 3,000 rands immediately. So time value of money, better for you. Okay, most of the time, guys, most of the time, Section 12E is the popular one. Okay, when would you not use Section 12E? If this asset is less than 7,000 rands. Because then you can claim everything immediately under Section 11E. So just here's the two rules. Where any plant or machinery which qualifies as a small business corporation, right, for if there's a taxpayer which qualifies as a small business corporation, is acquired by such a taxpayer, is bought into use for the first time, and is used in the process of manufacture, right? So, manufacturing asset. What's the rule then? 100% of cost. How much can you, can you deduct? A deduction equal to the cost. So, 100% of the cost in the year that it's bought into use. Section 12E1A is our assets qualify from Section 11E. So what you need to see here is you can select which one to use and 50, 30, 20 as discussed here. So let's look at those rules. It says, subject to subsection 1, where any machinery, plant, implement, utensil, in respect of which a deduction is allowable under Section 11E. So can you see they say if it qualifies for Section 11E, is acquired by a small business corporation 
then they tell you it must at the election of the small business corporations. Can you see your choice? Be either the amount allowable in terms of that subsection, and that subsection is section 11E, or this one, 50% of the cost, the asset in the year which was bought into use, 30% in the second year, so the first succeeding year, and 20% in the second succeeding year, so year 3. So there is our rule for section 12C and E.